Okay, so welcome to lesson eight. We're gonna look at total internal refraction today. And I think the most important component you need to understand with regards to this is that if you haven't done the FET simulation already, you really need to do that. Um, it's okay if you haven't done it for this lesson, but right after you watch this video or right, right after you participate in this office hour, I strongly recommend that you go to the website that's in the top of this, uh, this lesson with the instructions and, and, and try that out because it will really help to hammer home some of the ideas that we're going to be learning in this lesson. Okay, so the one thing that I want to talk about is the critical angle and how it relates to the angle of incidence. Um, when R, or that angle of refraction, is 90 degrees, that's what's called the critical angle, the angle at which total internal reflection occurs, or TIR. That means there's no bending of light and no movement into medium two. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that with the diagrams moving forward. So what does this mean in terms of the angle of incidence? Well, if you increase the angle of incidence, or I, past that critical angle, the light will remain inside the original medium. So it will not move from medium one to medium two. When we looked at all of our diagrams from the last couple of lessons, we always had that light move from medium one into medium two, calculate the angle of incidence, calculate the angle of refraction, speed of light medium one, speed of light medium two, angle of, or sorry, incidence of refraction, all that stuff that we calculated was leading up to understanding and studying the concept of total internal reflection. Because if you do increase that angle of incidence past that critical angle, the light will remain inside the original medium. There will be no refraction. There was only gonna be reflection. And that's what that next line says. So when you try changing the water to another substance, this is for the FET, uh, uh, the FET I guess, model that you're gonna try out. You're gonna be able to play around with it and recognize how that density interacts with that total internal reflection and the angle of incidence as well as that critical angle. So how does this fit into what we need to know with regards to our lesson and as a whole, this unit? So I'll, I'll just white out some of these components because I want to take them one step at a time because there's a couple of interesting components that I want to focus on. So the first reason why we should care is it creates these types of phenomenon that we see around us that we can utilize. So in diamonds, diamonds have a high index of refraction, that n is equal to 2.42. This means that diamonds have a relatively low critical angle. So when light enters the diamond from different angles as it is cut, total internal reflection will occur, making the diamond appear to sparkle. So this low critical angle allows more light to be totally internally reflected. And the more light that's held and captured within that diamond, the more shiny it is. So it's it's funny enough, funny enough to mention that different diamonds of different caliber, they have higher or lower index of refractions. And those higher level of index of refractions allow for more light to be captured within the diamond, that total internal reflection, and they make those diamonds quote unquote sparkle. There are some diamond experts who can look at a diamond and can determine its density or its index of refraction just by the amount of light that's totally internally reflected in it. So that's one application with which that we utilize as a species. The second one, which is more for the technological components of our lives, uh, is fiber optics. So fiber optics, it's a technology that uses light to transmit information very quickly from one point to another. The light must stay within the cable to transmit the information. That cable is a piece of plastic or, or fiberglass, and that critical angle needs to be quite low, so that way the angle of incidence can be higher than the value that it will stay within the glass wire. So that end value of the fiber optic cable will be quite high. These very specific materials are chosen to ensure that these messages are sent without losing any information. And so the wires need to be arranged in fine bundles that allow for that total internal reflection to occur. Again, having that high index of refraction allows for total internal reflection to occur. So these fiber optic cables have a very, very high density. That means that they have a very high index of refraction and it will allow for total internal reflection to occur. One more aspect that we can look at is how rainbows work. The dispersion of light or the separation of white light into colors happens in rainbows. And it's as a result of those raindrops uh, capturing sunlight essentially. So sun enters the front of the raindrop. It is refracted from air into water causing dispersion. 
the light hits the back of the raindrop and is then internally reflected. And as light leaves the front of the raindrop, it is refracted again from water into air, which is what we see and allows for us, or which is what allows for the colors to be produced from a rainbow. So it's not just so much that white light enters a raindrop and then as a result of that entering, there's dispersion. The dispersion happens as a result of that total internal reflection that creates that rainbow, that dispersion of colors from just plain white light. So that's pretty much the gist of total internal reflection. The idea that if you have a high angle or incidence of uh, like a high density, that high index of refraction, then you're more likely to have that total internal reflection at specifically lower angles, which is what allows for us to apply and utilize total internal reflection. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson. Thanks for watching, and I will answer questions if you got them.